The 8043 motorized excavator is the single greatest LEGO Technic set of all time. It has the most advanced mechanisms of any model and building this set will melt your brain. In order to see all those complex mechanisms, let's start with the box, which is absolutely massive. The back showcases the tracked loader B model and the front can fold up. The top half is gorgeous, showcasing the motorized functions and the bottom half has some cool shots of the excavator. Let's cut the tape. There are some flaps you can rip which I will not do in order to preserve the box. After everything has been taken out, you will see a bunch of unnumbered bags. It comes with a lot of power functions electronics, four medium motors, two infrared receivers, a battery box, as well as two remote controllers. Putting the batteries into the battery box is exceptionally easy since you just have to slide off the lids, but you do have to use a screwdriver for the remotes. The bucket piece was used in many previous sets and the last time we got it was back in 2011. There is a large, unnumbered sticker sheet as well as three sets of instructions. I appreciate how there is a showcase here of how the power function system works. I wish LEGO would do something similar for Powered Up. The building process starts by connecting two beams together with some spacers. Four of the following sections connect to the two beams, forming the chassis. These are reinforced further with lift arms. Let's take some 90 degree gear block sections, connect them together and add a 16 tooth gear to each section, but the gears are on different sides. Lock this portion into the chassis. Put another 16 tooth gear here and then secure some tiny 8 tooth ones. Take another pair of the 90 degree gear modules, secure them together with a long beam and some 24 tooth gears. Connect the section in such a way that allows the gears to mesh together and just look at how complex the drivetrain already is. Attach some 5 stud beams, push in the long black axle and flip the chassis. Add some sprockets to the driving axles and secure them to the back as well. Attach a bunch of small grey wheels and then secure the sides with Technic bricks. Put the chassis onto a pair of tracks and then wrap them around the chassis. Slide a 16 tooth gear with clutch with a driving ring and an extender onto the black axle. Notice how the track on our left spins the driving rings while the other one spins the axle itself. Take this 8 tooth gear module and connect it to the turntable. Attach it to the chassis and add a beam here along with another 16 tooth gear with clutch. Build out a beam with some gears and connect it on top. Secure a pair of 90 degree gear blocks on top. Look at how two independent motions pass through the center of a single turntable. What a fascinating mechanism and this is just the tip of the iceberg. Building the insanely advanced superstructure starts with three axles. Two motors are connected together and insert into the small structure along with two more motors. We have four all in a single line. A module consisting of a frame and a panel connect to the bottom of the motors. A vertical axle module inserts and we connect two of the infrared receivers together with some bricks. Unlike Powered Up, you can actually stack the cables together. Connect each of the four motors to the respective receiver port. Reinforce the cables with some system bricks. Flip the receivers, add the reinforcing module and flip back the receivers. Add a beam to secure everything and build up this cover made out of system bricks. Simply connect it on the back. Insert some axles into the motors and give each one a 16 tooth gear with clutch along with an axle extender and a driving ring. Insert a more uniquely built axle into the fourth motor. The following changeover catch section slides into the driving rings. Be very careful here since it caused me a lot of problems when I was first building this set 13 years ago. The switch allows you to see what position the gearbox is in. Insert another axle with a 4 tooth gear and a 16 tooth one, which ends up connecting the gearbox switches to the fourth motor. Add some more grey 16 tooth gears as well as the driving ring extenders. The gearbox already looks extremely complicated. Build up a structure with some gears and this is essentially a Technic frame. Make sure to properly insert all of the gears here. Use this frame to reinforce the gearbox. I have connected a battery box to show you how it works. The gearbox switch is motorized and it works beautifully. It's so advanced. And now we can connect this gearbox superstructure to the chassis, insert the pins from the bottom and build up this worm gear section. This will be responsible for rotating the superstructure. Connect some gears to a beam and then attach it to the gearbox. Add some more gears, connect this small built up frame to reinforce everything. Attach two linear actuators to the power outputs. Some various different beams reinforce the superstructure. Even the excavator arm is quite complex, using a bunch of axles and universal joints. 
points, make sure that everything is properly connected here, insert a linear actuator into the gray axle and reinforce it with several beams. Connect another linear actuator onto a separate beam structure and then cover it up with some panels. Attach this section onto the rest of the arm. When you connect all of these pieces, make sure that everything aligns with each other. After the bucket is attached to the last linear actuator, secure the entire arm to the superstructure. Connect the power from the gearbox to the axles within the arm using some bevel gears. The two actuators at the bottom end up holding the arm. Add some levers to the side of the excavator and this blue seat goes inside the cabin. Some beams and flexible axles make up the framing. Take four of these panel sections and start covering up the excavator. First, do the gearbox and then cover the arm. Insert the battery box, lock it with the switch and put an exhaust pipe on top. Connect two of the remotes together with some pins and insert three normal axles as well as an axle extender to make controlling it easier. By the way, my review of the LEGO Technic Lieber Crawler Crane LR13 thousand is coming very soon, so make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. No pressure though, no pressure. The 8043 comes with seven functions. We have the left track, the right track, rotation of the superstructure, gearbox switching, arm levitation, arm extension, as well as bucket dumping. All of that is able to be achieved with just four power functions medium motors, which is incredibly impressive. Let's actually play with it. First, we can drive the excavator up to the box with Lego pieces. Then, the gearbox is switched in order to lower the arm. We dig into some of the pieces, switch the gearbox again, drive back to make sure that the pieces go into the bucket. Then, we can scoop up the pieces with a bucket. The arm lifts up the pieces using two of the main linear actuators. Let's rotate the superstructure and then dump out all of the pieces into the red container. Playing with the set is just so much fun. Knowing that there is a gearbox inside that allows the mechanical magic to occur gives you a feeling that's simply indescribable with words. Seriously, I had so much more fun playing with this set than any other Technic model. This is the single greatest LEGO Technic set of all time, and for many good reasons. This was the first ever set to introduce a fully remotely controlled gearbox, and it had a fascinating mechanism that allows the two tracks to be controlled independently despite being powered from the superstructure. I mean, just look at how many gears the chassis has, and just how advanced it looks. It's quite literally the perfect Technic chassis. Interestingly, while moving the superstructure, the excavator will actually move forward or back very slowly. This is a result of those motions passing through the center of the turntable, and I actually think it's a really cool phenomenon. Honestly, I would have liked to see a mechanism like this used in the Lieber excavator. I think it should have had all seven motors in the top superstructure while using the mechanism of the 8043 to control the tracks. Replacing the batteries is quite easy. All you have to do is unlock the battery box, remove the exhaust pipe, and you can take out the battery box. This also allows you to see the four inline medium motors. Perhaps a fun mod for this excavator would be to replace the medium motors with large ones. Something I like to do is to just play with the set without any panels. Watching that exposed gearbox is truly mesmerizing, and it makes you wonder, how exactly does the power from the motors pass all the way down to the chassis? These mechanisms are mind-blowing. Even something as simple as rotating the superstructure uses a warm gear, which just looks awesome and it also serves as a mechanical diode. It drives an eight tooth gear, which is what's connected to the turntable. I can't stress enough just how much fun it is to play with. Yes, the Lieber excavator is more powerful, but the 8043 motorized excavator is better in every other way. It's just a much better experience switching the gearbox as opposed to activating a separate motor for their own functions. This motor that was just driving the track is now suddenly responsible for the arm. I mean, that's simply astonishing. It even has enough power to lift itself a little, which is incredible. And let's not forget that it actually came with some physical controllers. Using the tactile switches is a nice feeling, but at the same time it had very limited range due to the infrared technology and there were no proportional sliders, which is especially needed for tracked models since they have a tendency to veer either to the left or to the right. I personally don't mind phone control, but this was a nice change from all of the modern Technic sets. Moreover, this set even had an amazing B model, the tracked loader. When I was seven, 
I got a second copy of the motorized excavator specifically for the B model. Lego should absolutely bring them back. I'm sure that it'll actually be more profitable for them since some people will buy two copies of a set as opposed to just one. I like to give a rating to the Lego Technic sets out of 10 gearboxes. Some have 6 out of 10 gearboxes, some have 7, but the 8043 motorized excavator doesn't even have 10. It has a Google Plex gearboxes out of a possible 10. That's how perfect it is. Here's a fun fact about the 8043 motorized excavator. Did you know that it was sold for only two weeks, pulled from the Lego store, and then brought back with updated linear actuators? Back in 2010, you could actually request an upgrade kit for the 8043 motorized excavator if yours came with the older actuators. The upgrade kit came with updated actuators, some extra pieces, as well as instructions for how to upgrade it. I just had some newer actuators lying around, so I used those instead of opening the upgrade kit. This upgrade kit will remain sealed since it's a piece of Technic history. If you would like to learn more about this bizarre piece of Technic history, then click on the video right over here. This is your Unbrick Me here, and I'll see you in the next one.